Just one, two. Is that on? Yep. That's good. Oh, no, wait. Got it back to working. Because I love technology. <laughs> Just a reminder, um, Saturday at 11 is the funeral for a meta vetter. So that'll be here at 11 with the lunch following. Then we're going to go up to Leola for the committal. Wonderful little old lady was 98, so a uh, good long life with us. I think you all know the basic uh, format that we're doing tonight. So we begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And. Folks, uh, if you'll start here, go ahead and take it away. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening. The day is almost over. Let your shine within you. 
Blessed are you, creator of the universe. From old you have led your people by night and day. May the light of your Christ make our darkness bright. For your word and your presence are the light of our pathways, and you are the light and life of all creation.
May our prayers come before you, O God, as infants. And may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Amen. A couple scriptures for tonight. One from the Gospel of Luke and one from the Gospel of John. The story of Peter, a little bit here. And immediately, while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the saying of the Lord, how he had said to him, before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. And from the Gospel of John, what happened uh, about 10 days later. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. That dichotomy between sadness, sacrifice, death, and then to realize that there is still life after that is what uh, is the point of the story I'm going to read tonight for you. <coughs> Excuse me. One of my favorite authors is a, was, was an anthropologist named Lauren Isley. If you've not read him, uh, his last name is spelled E-I-S-E-L-E-Y. He was a Midwesterner, and he studied fossils, and he made observations about nature. If you've ever heard of uh, part of the story about the guy on the beach that finds a starfish and throws it back in the water so it can live, that's one of Isley's stories. It's probably his most famous. And that one is called The Star Thrower. So what I want to read you tonight is a short story called The Judgment of the Birds. I have said that I saw a judgment upon life and that it was not passed by human beings. Those who stare at birds in cages or who test minds by their closeness to our own, may not care for it. It comes from far away out of my past, in a place of pouring waters and green leaves. I shall never see an episode like it again if I live to be a hundred. Nor do I think that one man in a million has ever seen it, because man is an intruder into such silences. The light must be right, and the observer must remain unseen. No one sets up such an experiment. What that person sees, they see by chance. So you may put it that I had come over a mountain, that I had slogged through fern and pine needles for half a long day, and that at the edge of a little glade, with one long crooked branch extending across it, I had sat down to rest with my back against a stump. Through accident, I was concealed from the glade, although I could see into it perfectly. The sun was warm there, and the murmurs of forest life blurred softly away into my sleep. When I awoke, Dimly aware of some commotion and outcry in the clearing, the light was slanting down through the pines in such a way that the glade was lit like some vast cathedral. I could see the dust motes of wood pollen in the long shaft of light, and there on that extended branch sat an enormous raven with a red and squirming nestling and his beak. The sound that awoke me was the outri outraged cry.
cries of the nestling's parents, who flew helplessly in circles about the clearing. The sleek black monster was indifferent to them. He gulped, wetted his beak on the dead branch a moment, and sat still. Up to that point, the little tragedy had followed the usual pattern. But suddenly, out of all that area of woodland, a soft sound of complaint began to rise. Into the glade fluttered small birds of half a dozen varieties, drawn by the anguished outcries of the tiny parents. No one dared to attack the raven, but they cried there in some instinctive common misery, the bereaved and the unbereaved. The glade filled with their soft rustling and their cries. They fluttered as though to point their wings at the murderer. There was a dim, intangible ethic he had violated that they knew. He was the bird of death. And he, the murderer, the black bird, at the heart of life, sat on there, glistening in the common light, formidable, unmoving, unperturbed, untouchable. The sighing died. It was then that I saw the judgment. It was the judgment of life against death. I will never see it again so forcefully presented. I will never hear it again in notes so tragically prolonged. For in the midst of protest, they forgot the violence. There in that clearing, the crystal note of a song sparrow lifted hesitantly in the hush. And finally, after painful fluttering, another took the song, and then another, the song passing from one bird to another, doubtfully at first, as though some evil thing were being slowly forgotten, till suddenly they took heart and sang from many throats joyously together as birds are known to sing. They sang because life is sweet and sunlight beautiful. They sang under the brooding shadow of the raven. In simple truth, they had forgotten the raven for they were the singers of life and not of death. I recommend this author to you. I've got a couple of his books in my office if you want to take a look at them. But I like that because uh, in our faith, we don't shy away from the reality of death. We know that Christ died on the cross but we also know there's life after that. So may we learn how to, in our, in our own way, sing, if not physically, internally, or by our actions, by what we do and how, how we say and how we speak to one another. That would be my hope. If we go back to your, your book now for a moment. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. We continue. <clears throat> An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman
like to leave the metal bucket back there as it would be the place for it. We continue. Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and light, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us for evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now stand for the final blessing. I should have had a stand for the Lord's Prayer, but I forgot. Let us bless our God. Raising thanks to you. Make God creator bless and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our love. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, go in peace. Amen.